Well, here we are. College basketball season has officially begun. It's officially here. And, you know, we're going to talk about the NBA first. Um, we're about six or seven, eight, give or take, six, seven, eight games into the season so far. And right now you have the Boston Celtics as the only unbeaten left in the NBA. Um, but, yeah, the big thing is that, you know, James Harden is an L.A. Clipper. Yeah, so, you know, him, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and Russell Westbrook are all going to be Clippers, which is crazy to me. Uh, I, I swear I said something stupid on my preseason projections, or I think, I think I did, if I'm not mistaken, but it's okay. So what does this mean? What does that mean specifically? Um, honestly, not much right now. You, you, these guys you know, have been through hell and back for a couple years now. These four gentlemen specifically have been through hell and back for a couple years now. And, you know, it's been injuries, it's been egos, it's been all sorts of different things, you know, to where these four haven't been able to play their best basketball. Does it result in the Clippers, you know, getting somewhere? I don't know. I don't know right now. You can't say anything about the Lakers, though. Lakers, no, not the Lakers. Um, the Nuggets are still doing their thing. And again, like I said, it, it's, it's going as good as I thought it would be for the Denver Nuggets. Um, the Mavs are surprisingly close to the top of the NBA standings right now. Very surprising there. Um, but what about that in-season tournament? Yeah, it was rough. It, it, but, but you see the courts. Some of those have looked rough to, to look at so far. Uh, my goodness, man. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say right now. Um, speaking of things I don't even know how to comprehend right now, I have no idea. First off, for, first things first, Victor Wimbanyama, and I'm going to keep pronouncing this man's name wrong, but Wimbanyama, he's a unit. Spurs are doing all right, but the Grizzlies, they – were they, they they looked even worse than I had thought. You have guys like Marcus Smart being a turnover machine. You have Desmond Bain, JJJ, Jaron Jackson Jr. You know, those guys aren't playing, you know, they're playing their best. That's not good enough. Grizzlies finally beat Portland last night in an overtime game that I was unfortunately putting my money on, but you know, it's it's fine. Um, yeah. So right now we're still kind of getting in the swing of things, you know. Again, most teams have played like six, seven, eight games, so we're we're still kind of getting a gauge on things right now. So there's, there's plenty of basketball to go. Again, we'll talk about the NBA more, you know. You know, when, when we get to, towards Thanksgiving feast week and everything like that, we'll talk about the NBA some more. Kind of get, you know, I feel like it. I feel like it takes at least 10, 15 games for you know things to get really settled, but. Alas, alas, men's college basketball is here. Um, Kirk Creesa, I believe he has been suspended for, what, nine games? And let me check that again. I, I swear it's nine games. That's what I read. Yeah, yeah, it's nine games. Um, you know, just, you know, it, it's fine. I mean, he's playing on West Virginia, though. So that that's something. Um. You have guys like Bronny James, LeBron's son, not suiting up for USC just yet. He think he's still hurt with something, some some kind of issue he's got. Um, Purdue, I think there's, there's a couple teams here, you know, that are really really interesting. The talk again, men's college basketball has the parity. We'll talk about women's college basketball in a moment, but the men's side specifically has the parity due to the March Madness factor being a thing. You know, you have Zach Eddy still wrecking havoc. In fact, uh, Purdue is playing, I think they're playing, uh, I don't know who they're playing today. I think they're playing Sanford today. And the tallest guy on Sanford, that was, he, he was like 5'8". Like, wh like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Um, Kyle Filipowski emerging for Dukes. So John Shayer, you know, he's, he's getting the boys out of Blue Devil Country, you know, getting them ready. Kansas has Hunter Dickinson now. He was at Michigan. Now he's here at Kansas. That's going to spell disaster, I think, for the rest of the Big 12 in a way. 
Um, Tom Izzo, you know, of course, of course, it's an Izzo group would experience one of the toughest schedules in all the nation. Of course, there are other teams like Tennessee under Rick Barnes, my Texas Longhorns, of course, UConn. Um, Again, Duke, North Carolina is still kind of hanging around in there. They're not really that type of team yet. I don't think UConn, again, the national champions. You know, Florida Atlantic, who's returned every single starter from last year. Every single one of them. You know, Houston, you know, you know, still a tough out. And my final four this year is looking a little bit different. I know I've said for like four or five years now. That Gonzaga is finally going to win the title. I'm, I'm going to break that tradition this year and go with a radically different Final Four. First things first, Michigan State. Again, the experience this team has in, you know, February. You know, January, February, Izzo. <laughs> Izzo reigns in March. Again, Michigan State, the experience will get them there. Florida Atlantic, what else can you say? Team that has the potential. You know, there's other teams that are in smaller conferences that have the potential to, again, of course, you know, Gonzaga is there. Uh, St. Mary's, San Diego State, New Mexico. So, you know, a lot of people are saying New Mexico. Uh, but I think the championship will come down to either Houston or Kansas. I really, I'm really, you know, not entirely sold because, again, he, like people are saying, oh, well, Hunter Dickinson is going to be this great guy. You know, he's going to, he's definitely, he, Filipowski, and, and Eddie are all going to be up for the National Player of the Year award. I feel like that's what a lot of people are thinking. And I feel like some people are having Purdue, you know, kind of in the Final Four too highly for me. And that's like, no. Like, we saw what Purdue has been able to do the last couple of years, and they've bowed out each time. But I think a Big Ten team will get there. But it's gonna be Michigan State, though. It's gonna it's gonna be Michigan State. I don't think I don't see a team like Maryland. I don't see a team like you know Purdue. Purdue probably might win the Big Ten, and I don't know if they'll make it all the way. But I think it'll come down to either Houston or Kansas, and I'm leaning towards Houston again. Um, they added some transfers that have been a thorn in a lot of people's sides. You know, they lost you know Sasser and Mark. They added LJ Cryer and they added somebody else. And that that that's 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 the key to the puzzle right there. So yeah. Yeah. I'm going with Houston. I know. A wild pick for sure, but this is what I'm going with. I do think Florida Atlantic could win the national championship with the five guys they have. That is that is a team that made it all the way. And then women's college basketball, we're trying to see what the parody can bring. We're trying to see, you know, what the parody can bring. Um, I am going to be watching a couple of women's basketball games this week. Iowa, Virginia Tech, the rematch of the what, the Final Four matchup from last year. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think, you know, there, there, there's something there as far as parody goes. There are a lot of teams that are kind of, you know, in it. Um, speaking of teams that are kind of in it, Don Staley's South Carolina Gamecocks just beat up, just beat the mess out of Notre Dame. They beat up in Paris by 29. Um, get ready. You know, speaking of that Iowa team, get ready for Clayton Clark to shoot threes from the logo, from your backyard, from Jupiter. Just watch her shoot from everywhere. And Haley Van Lift, remember, she joined LSU this year. She was like, yeah, I'm going to come on over. And start cooking with Angel Reese, you know, to like like them them girls is gonna be cooking. They are gonna be cooking. This is gonna be a spicy year, you know, for the defending national championship. You know, um, UConn. The issue for them is health. Paige Wilkers, definitely one of the, one of those one of those talented talented ladies, you know, but she's been injured a lot, and you know, so the health of UConn and there's other players on UConn that. You know, could potentially you know have that it factor. And again, will there be more parity this year? Um, uh, well, I mean, you see my final four for for the women's game. You see my final four. Um, not all of these teams I think will be one seeds though. I don't think South Carolina, you know, might be. I think it may either it will either be South Carolina or LSU that will get that one seed. UConn may not even be a one seed either. But I definitely think UConn has the resiliency to make it back 
And ultimately, I think Caitlin Clark will get that revenge. You know, I ultimately think this is what will happen. I think Iowa will be cutting down those nets in Cleveland. You know, same as Houston cutting down the nets in Arizona. So there you go, everybody. I know. I know. These predictions are probably going to be completely dog water <laughs> in like three or four months. They're going to be completely dog water in three or four months. But watch. I might get one right. I might get two, maybe three, but maybe not all four. But, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll find out as we continue to go through the season. Again, there were a lot of matchups early on, like Arizona, Duke. I'm on the mid side that I'm going to be keeping my eye on. Of course, again, I mentioned that Iowa um, Virginia Tech game, Champions Classic, you know, is next week. So, the week after the elections, that's when the Champions Classic will take place. Uh, this year, it will be Duke, Michigan State, and Kansas, Kentucky. Of course, there's also Marquette you know, taking on Illinois. Um, what else? There are some games tonight that are interesting. Again, USC, no, no Bronny James, so they're gonna have to go up against Kansas State, you know, without him. You know, and of course, there's other interesting games throughout the week. There's gonna be, there's bound to be some upsets. There's bound to be some teams that are below D1 beating D1 teams. There's bound to be some, you know, lower tier D1 teams beating top tier D1 teams. It just is what it is. You know, the first couple weeks of the season. So we'll find out everything we need to know as the season progresses. But I think we're in a good spot right now. I think we're in a good spot. There are. Um, speaking of the women's game, there are some interesting games on Sunday, but that's NFL Sunday. We are not getting in the way of NFL Sunday here. Not not on this channel. We don't you know get we don't get away with watching other sports on an NFL Sunday. Not here. No. But yeah. So there y'all go. Um, that's just my thought process on things. Again, I still think the women's game has a little bit to go as far as parity goes, but the men's game is wide open. Like again, like I said, men's game is wide open. I mean, I mean, yeah. how many teams did I throw out on that list? Like 15, 20, you know, Arizona, USC, you know, yes, USC is surprisingly a contender. I, I'd even throw UCLA up in there. You know, from the Pac-12, which is about to die. You know, again, Texas, Houston, Kansas, the Big 12, Marquette, Creighton, maybe UConn for the Big East, uh, ACC, Duke at the very least, SEC, Kentucky at the very least. I haven't even thrown out what John Calipari is about to cook up in Lexington this year. He's going to cook up something. You know, again, it, it's going to be a tough, tough year. On the men's side, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna be undefeated. On the men's side, everybody will at least have four losses or more. There will be nobody's gonna have less than three losses going into that final weekend. That's what I'm gonna say. That's also a thing I'm gonna say because I think this year is gonna be tough. Transfer portal is starting to cook even even more. Uh, on the women's side, there there might be somebody that has one loss. You know, at the end of the at the end of the day, going into you know, March Madness, but I don't know. Again, we'll figure it out when we figure it out. So I'll talk to y'all again about basketball, you know, sometime before Thanksgiving. So sometime before Thanksgiving, I'll talk to y'all again about, you know, where we stand with college basketball and where, how I'm feeling. Um, I've not watched much NBA. I'll say that right now. And again, men's and women's college basketball, I'm going to try and watch more of you know, throughout the season, I, and I think you know, watching opening night of the NBA just showed that some teams just aren't ready yet. Like LeBron and company, they they're not ready. So, like it it, it it's 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 gonna be rough. But yeah, so there y'all go. Um, talk to you tomorrow again about that college football, sweet sweet college football. We get to talk that tomorrow. So again, y'all take care, have a good night, and see you tomorrow.